and immigration advocates rallying in Foley Square, calling the plan disruptive and destabilizing for families. Men at the migrant center, who are only supposed to be here for four days, have a recreation room with multiple TVs, plush couch. Evicting families with school-age children on any day. Migrants gathered outside the hotel are saying they won't board them. They say they're concerned about conditions at the new shelter. <laughs> In terms of the fire safety issues, these are not fire traps and these are not death traps. Migrant crisis in New York City. The opening of the new migrant shelter at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn has brought attention to the complex issues surrounding the migrant crisis in New York City. While the shelter was intended to provide accommodation for migrant families, a significant number refused to stay, raising questions about the city's approach to handling the surge in migrants. New York City, known as a sanctuary city, has faced challenges as it grapples with the unexpected influx of migrants. The city's initial invitation to migrants has resulted in a significant population increase, complicating efforts to provide adequate housing and support. The city's attempt to address the migrant crisis includes the creation of tent cities and temporary housing. With limited space and a crowded urban environment, Finding suitable accommodations has become a daunting task. The situation has led to some migrants sleeping on floors in waiting areas due to the shortage of beds in homeless shelters. Since early last year, tens of thousands of migrants from the southern border have arrived in New York City. The city's unique rule, requiring the provision of a bed to anyone homeless who requests one, has contributed to the challenge of accommodating the growing migrant population. As of October, the city is estimated to house around 65,000 migrants, presenting a significant strain on resources. The video footage, captured by a migrant from Venezuela, sheds light on the living conditions and challenges faced by migrants in New York City. Many migrants experience difficulty navigating city offices, seeking a place to sleep, some express frustration, feeling that the government is intentionally exhausting them to discourage persistence. City officials have acknowledged the financial strain and have implemented measures to encourage migrants to leave, including offering tickets to anywhere in the world. The cost of caring for the large migrant population has led to discussions about alternative solutions, such as providing tents and sleeping bags for migrants to sleep outdoors. As colder weather sets in, concerns about the well-being of migrants in makeshift camps and the city's ability to meet their needs persist. The tension between providing support to migrants and managing the city's budgetary constraints raises questions about the sustainability of current policies. Looking back to the migrants' journey through Central America, documented by a CNN journalist, highlights the harsh conditions they faced before arriving in New York. The treacherous journey through the Darren Gap, facing dangers of theft, burning plastic, and lack of facilities, underscores the desperation that led migrants to seek refuge in the United States. Immigration advocates rallying in Foley Square, calling the plan disruptive and destabilizing for families. Men at the migrant center, who are only supposed to be here for four days, have a recreation room with multiple TVs, plush couch. Evicting! with school-age children on any day. Migrants gathered outside the hotel are saying they won't board them. They say they're concerned about conditions at the new shelter. Navigating challenges in migrant sheltering. The establishment of a new migrant shelter at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn reflects the ongoing challenges faced by New York City in managing the migrant crisis. The facility, built at a cost of $20 million, aims to provide temporary accommodations for newly arrived migrant families, offering a range of amenities, including a cafeteria, fully plumbed trailer-style bathrooms, and shower facilities. However, the recent refusal of some migrant families to stay at the shelter highlights the complexities and controversies surrounding the city's efforts to address the growing migrant population. The shelter at Floyd Bennett Field was designed to house 500 families, providing them with a secure and equipped environment. 
Each family is assigned a makeshift room with individual electric plugs and access to a cafeteria open 24-7. The facility also includes shower trailers and transportation services to assist migrants in their daily activities. Despite these efforts, a significant number of migrant families turn down the offered accommodations, expressing confusion and frustration. Reasons cited for refusal included concerns about the shelter's distance from their children's schools and dissatisfaction with the overall setup. The rejection of the shelter by some migrants has sparked criticism with individuals questioning their expectations and reactions to the provided facilities. The city's response to the refusal emphasizes the challenges it faces in finding suitable options for migrants. A spokesperson for Mayor Eric Adams stated that the city has utilized every available corner and is running out of good options to shelter migrants. This statement reflects the broader issue of limited resources and the city's struggle to accommodate the growing number of migrants within its borders. The situation at Floyd Bennett Field echoes previous incidents, where migrants resisted relocation efforts. Nine months ago, protests erupted when migrants were asked to leave hotels in Manhattan, raising concerns about conditions at the proposed new shelter at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal. Migrants expressed fears of inhumane conditions and insufficient food, leading to reluctance in boarding buses to the new location. These incidents highlight the tension between the city's efforts to find practical solutions for migrant sheltering and the expectations and demands of some migrant individuals. The challenge is compounded by financial constraints, as providing high-class accommodations for all migrants is not feasible given the city's budget limitations. The debate surrounding migrant shelters in New York City underscores broader questions about immigration policies, humanitarian considerations, and the responsibilities of local governments. The city's designation as a sanctuary city has attracted migrants seeking refuge, leading to increased strain on resources and infrastructure. The refusal of some migrants to stay at designated shelters prompts reflection on the complexities of managing migration influxes. It brings attention to the need of comprehensive and sustainable solutions that balance the well-being of migrants with the practical limitations of the host city. As the situation continues to evolve, policymakers must navigate the delicate balance between compassion for migrants and the practical constraints faced by local authorities. Addressing the migrant crisis in New York City requires a nuanced approach that considers the diverse needs of the migrant's population, the financial implications for the city, and the broader societal impact of immigration policies. The plan requires families to pack up and move out of their hotel while their kids are at school, then go back to the arrival center. That is not a better place. That is a bad place. That is not good for anybody. We certainly are running out of funds. And so we really have to move from an emergency to managing this in the way that makes sense. Challenges and controversies. Recent developments in New York City surrounding the relocation of migrants from the Watson Hotel to a new shelter in Red Hook have generated both applause and dissent among the affected individuals and the public. The complexities of this situation highlight the challenges faced by both migrants seeking stable living conditions and the city grappling with the logistics of accommodating a growing migrant population. A significant number of migrants, like Castiano, have refused to move to the Brooklyn facility, citing various reasons. One notable factor is the facility's location in Red Hook, a neighborhood with challenging public transportation access. For some migrants, relocation would mean moving away from their jobs or English language classes, adding another layer of difficulty to their resettlement. The scene outside the Watson Hotel has witnessed protests, cheers, and vocal expression of frustration. Migrants have voiced their concerns, emphasizing their humanity and the challenges they face. One individual stressed that while they acknowledge their illegal status, they deserve compassion as fellow human beings. The emotional pleas reflect the desperation and uncertainty felt by migrants seeking stability in their living conditions. Mayor Eric Adams' spokesperson defended the Brooklyn facility, describing it as a heated, temperature-controlled space with adequate amenities such as toilets and assigned storage spaces. 
However, the reluctance of migrants to accept the offered shelter has exposed a critical gap between the city's efforts and the expectations of some individuals. The city's $275 million contract with the Hotel Association of New York City to house migrants across 300 hotels for six months has also come under scrutiny. Volunteers and advocates outside the Watson have criticized what they perceive as inhumane treatment of migrants. The call for migrants to stay at the Watson, given its existing contract, is a plea for fairness and equal consideration. Volunteers emphasize that this is not a competition between migrants and New Yorkers or between different groups. Rather, it's a collective effort to ensure that all people, regardless of their background, have access to housing. The strong police presence outside the Watson and the closure of part of 57th Street have sparked concerns about the potential impact on public opinion. Volunteers worry that the situation might be misconstrued as dangerous when, in reality, it involves individuals calmly awaiting housing placement. The ongoing media coverage and police presence add further complexities to an already challenging situation. Migrants like Castiano, who have experienced multiple relocations, express a simple desire for stability and a bed where they can stay for an extended period. Castiano's plea underscores the fundamental need for secure and consistent living conditions, emphasizing the importance of addressing the broader challenges faced by migrants in New York City. The ongoing saga of migrant relocations in New York City sheds light on the intricate web of challenges faced by both the city and migrants. Balancing the logistical demands of sheltering a growing migrant population with the individual need and aspirations of those seeking refuge requires nuanced solutions. As the situation unfolds, it prompts a broader conversation about compassion, fairness, and the collective responsibility to ensure that everyone, irrespective of their background, has access to stable and humane living conditions. In terms of the fire safety issues, these are not fire traps and these are not death traps. Migrant families with children who have not found permanent housing living at the Rowe Hotel in Midtown. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.